the Ginyu Force. Funny, feminine, artistic. They're pretty hilarious. And the memes are amazing. Just look at the fan art. The poses. The plushing Frieza. But, were they really as goofy as you remember? Or were they actually complete and total badasses? Play the intro. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the links in the description. This is GF Machina, telling all of you that the Guinea Force was much more awesome than a lot of you remember. Get some stretches in, and break out your best dance moves, because this one is going to be intense. Alright, so I want to start off by saying that the Guinea Force intimidated the crap out of me as a child, and they still do. There may be a few of you watching that aren't sure who or what the Ginyu Force is, so I'll tell you right now. In the anime manga Dragon Ball Z, the Z Warriors travel to planet Namek in an attempt to revive their friends who died in battle. It is there that they encounter the evil galactic tyrant Frieza, who, after a long struggle for the Dragon Balls, sends his special forces, the Ginyu Force, to finish off our heroes. They are the personal death squad of the evil tyrant. They have fame for fighting in the shadows of Frieza's empire, and they annihilate everything wherever they go. Entire civilizations vanish at their feet, and their enemies cower in fear of their power. They are memorable, they have odd demeanors, and they use wacky dance moves. Because of this, a lot of people remember them as more of a joke than anything else. Especially because of all the memes and the people who cosplay them. Memes and jokes aside, the Ginyu Force was the real deal back in the day. Comment what you think about the Ginyu Force, and if you like them or not. Personally, I like them a lot. Anyway, spoiler alert like always, just in case you haven't watched Dragon Ball Z yet. The Ginyu Force came a little bit late to the party in the Namek Saga. All of the Dragon Balls had been gathered, and a lot of the main Frieza Force and Namekians had been killed already. Our heroes were fighting to keep the last ball away from Vegeta, and were in a desperate struggle as Frieza's anger rose over the loss of his precious Dragon Balls. Goku was still on his way. The Namek Saga was reaching its climax, and everyone watching for the first time could tell. Things were about to go down. Frieza was pissed, Vegeta was pissed, our heroes were in desperate need of Goku, but he wasn't due for several hours. It was stressful. But when Krillin sends Gohan to unlock his power, and the Namekian Nail, whose power we didn't know yet, stood alongside our heroes, we felt like Krillin and Gohan could hold out long enough for Goku to arrive. Then things started to hit the fan. Vegeta's fear and a sudden change of demeanor were terrifying. Before this, Vegeta had been so sure of himself, so prideful and full of belief in his own power. But then, five great forces appeared in the sky above, each one more powerful than the last, and stronger than Vegeta. The calm and serene nail begins to sweat, the wise guru begins to fill with fear. All is not right on Namek. The Ginyus have their own masses of soldiers who tend to them. They have their own emblem, and their own personal attack pods. Every soldier on the Frieza planet prepares for their departure, and they watch them in awe as they launch from their base. The Ginyus produce fear wherever they go. In reality, the Ginyu Force is an extension of Frieza's power. They are a force of nature with no remorse and no restraint other than Frieza himself. Once they come, it means Frieza wants you dead, and there isn't much you can do to stop it. Everyone fears them. The soldiers, Vegeta, the Namekians, King Kai, and so on. It is this buildup that made them so epic. Frieza himself has respect for them and their power, and for them to be so confident and fearless before their leader, it shows that they rarely, if ever, fail on their missions. All other characters in this series pissed themselves in Frieza's presence, but not the Guineas. They were the only characters in my memory to not outright fear Frieza. If you have a favorite Guinea Force member, 
Who is it? Write down why your favorite Guinea Force member is the best one of the bunch in the comments. And I'll tell you guys which one is my favorite at the end. Now, guys, I think you'll agree that someone can look really badass, but if they don't have the bark and bite to go along with it, then the whole look can come off as a farce. I can calmly say that the Guinea Force's looks with their badass armor and poses was accented and paired perfectly with their personality and great power. They come on to Namek with smug smiles, synchronized fly, and choreographed poses. Captain Guinea was so sure of himself and his crew. They all look and act so competent. They laugh at the prospect of hurting and killing. It brings them joy and excitement. They fight over who gets to kill who and complain and fight like school kids when it isn't them that was picked to kill Vegeta or to kill Krillin and Gohan. They play rock, paper, scissors and talk about dry cleaning and washing their hair from getting dusty in battle. Their companions are getting beaten, but their resolve and belief in their own strength is so great that they aren't worried. They want to be treated to chocolate parfaits and free lunch. They walk into the Namek saga, shooting memorable lines and flaunting off their power. And if it hadn't been for Goku, they would have wiped our heroes clean off the planet. They had a reason to be so smug and sure of themselves. Raccoon was powerful, yes. But what made him seem nearly invincible, and more powerful than he actually was, was his attitude. He seemed like a zombie, a monster. He didn't care if Vegeta was hurting him, or if Krillin and Gohan did damage. The others didn't care either. He was nearly killed by Vegeta. It was like watching a Rocky movie, but in reverse. Rocky is an evil galactic mercenary and he just won't go down. And after him, there are three more of them that have to fight, possibly just as powerful, or even more powerful. How did the Z fighters hold it together? They were on the brink of death, and barely surviving against a masochist who reshaped Namek with an energy blast from his mouth. Birder and Jace were also part of what made Raccoon and the Ginyu so intimidating. Their casual demeanor as their friend is being pummeled is insane. Raccoon is just having a laugh. Jace says that his friend is battered and beaten. Birder is the fastest in the universe. He is so fast that Vegeta is left speechless. Captain Ginyu brings it all together with an odd but lethal personality. He always gets the toughest fight. But on this occasion, he is going to let his team get a taste of blood and hands Vegeta over to them as if he were a simple task and Gohan and Krillin nothing more than an afterthought. Captain Ginyu knew his own weaknesses, and wasn't as silly or as stupid as the others. He actually pushes our heroes even with Goku at their side to the edge, nearly defeating them through sheer force of will and cunning. Captain Ginyu was a great and intelligent warrior. I mean, Goku was more than two times stronger than he was, and Ginyu nearly defeated him. Their partially stoic nature builds upon their imposing visage, with little care over the death of what I consider a throwaway character, Guldo. Although he was pretty magnificent on the Team 4 Star's edit of Dragon Ball Z. They care little for the death of their comrades, and get angry more than anything because they will have to choreograph new dances. Notice I said partially stoic because they do seem bothered by the deaths of their friends, but nowhere near to the level of what a normal person would feel. Death means little to them. Killing means nothing to them. Killing is a sport, and they're the best players around. The only people they seem to worry about is themselves, which seems quite common in the Dragon Ball universe. One cannot talk about the Guinea Force without talking about their poses. And oh boy does the fandom love to make fun of their poses. To be quite honest, I love them. What do you guys think though? They're like little magical girls from old anime. Or like the Power Rangers. The group is even color coded. But still, it's all part of their gimmick. The poses, the dancing, the stoic attitudes. They add to the feeling of danger and hopelessness when facing the mighty Ginyu Force. 
It is insulting and frustrating to be beaten to a pulp and killed by a giant humanoid in skin-tight spandex that is running around the battlefield like a ballerina. The Ginyu Force gives off a lot of feminine vibes, but at the same time they exude traditional manliness. They are the equivalent of MMA fighters who paint their toenails. Oh, you think it's weird that I paint them purple? Why don't you just make me stop painting them then? Trust me, you won't. Actually, you probably won't even say anything if you see an MMA fighter painting his toenails or doing anything feminine. That MMA fighter will kick your ass. Just being an MMA fighter is already at the peak of badassery. The Ginyu Force is no different in the Dragon Ball universe. Their power and toughness melds well with their feminine aspects. They can say what they want, do what they want, and act the way they want because they'll kill you if you so much as look at them funny. Raccoon can pose like a little ballerina if he wants and feels like it, because he knows you're not going to make fun of him or tell him anything. Raccoon is one of the few characters in fictional media who can pose like this and still look absolutely terrifying. They're all over the top. They're outrageous. They're feminine. They're manly. Everyone fears them and Vegeta did too forced him to ally himself with the people he hated most at the time, and that means something. The Ginyu Force is awesome. The Ginyu Force impacted my childhood. I was always fascinated by the idea that a group of badasses who laid waste to intergalactic civilizations could be so intimidating and over the top and feminine and artsy all at the same time. I just hope that the Ginyu Force will continue to inspire fiction writers and artists and I hope that through this video you have hopefully gained a better understanding of why the Ginyu Force was so awesome. And maybe you'll appreciate them a lot more. For being in only like 18 episodes of the anime, they sure made their mark. By the way, my favorite Ginyu Force member is Jace. He's hilarious and he's from Space Australia. Rukum is a close second. He always scared me as a child. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. All of these images and video clips are owned by Funimation Toei Animation and their original copyright holders. Please support the official release. If you like my video, like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me your thoughts. Did I change the way you viewed the Ginyu Force? Also, follow me on social media at GF Machina. I mostly use Instagram, but I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. Check out the links in the description for cool DBZ merch. I appreciate you guys a lot for watching this. You are all awesome. And I'll see you guys next time in the next video.